Hi, and welcome to Getting Started with DGraph, Episode 2. In the last episode of the tutorial, we learned some of the basics of DGraph, including how to run the database, add new nodes and predicates, and query them back. In this episode, we will use those skills to build the graph you see on screen. We will then learn how to use UIDs, or universal identifiers, of those nodes to do the following. We will learn how to query nodes given their UIDs, and also how to change or delete predicates attached to that given node. We will also learn how to attach an edge in between two existing nodes given their UID. And finally, we will learn how to traverse predicates on DGraph and recursion. So let's get started by running DGraph with the DGraph standalone Docker image. It is pretty straightforward, and today I'm going to map only the port 8080 because it's the only one we're going to be using. Once the database is running, you can go visit play.dgraph.io, click on latest, and before we start the any mutations, let's connect to our instance. So our instance is running in localhost 8080. Now we're using the playground, but to connect to our local instance, and we're going to send a mutation to create our graph. Today we'll start by using JSON format, so set will be a field with an array with a bunch of objects. In this case, only one though that has name, age, and follows. And follows is also an array of objects. In this case, also only one, which is the name corresponding to pa1 with age 28. And finally, we have another follows because pa1 follows another node named Layla with age 31. Once you click on run, you will see that new UIDs have been created. You can then query back those names and values by using something we've learned in the previous episode. You can use a has name, fetch those names, and when you click on those nodes, you will see that there's a UID. UID 0x1 corresponds to pa1. You can also, alternatively, just request for the UID, and it will also be returned to JSON. So 0x1 for pa1, 0x2 for Layla, and 0x3 for Michael. If you have any questions regarding how we created this graph, it is probably a good idea for you to go rewatch the previous episode. Now that we know those UIDs, we can actually use those together with the UID function to select the nodes that we care. So now we're going to say we're going to start with only the node with UID 0x3 and fetch the UID and name, which correspond to 0x3 and the name Michael. If you wanted to fetch more than one node, simply give more than one UID. Okay, so now that we know how to create a graph, create new nodes and predicates among them, let's figure out how to update them. Let's say that Michael is not 41 anymore, now he's 42. Congratulations and happy birthday, Michael. Happy birthday! But how do we reflect that on our database? Well, let's go back to the query that we had before where we're fetching only Michael. We can see that Michael is 41. And now we're going to use a new mutation. So let's click on mutate. And we are going to pass a new array with a single object that has the UID 0x3, which corresponds to Michael, but H42. When we run this mutation, we will see that success. And when we run the query again, we will get the updated H. In the same way we updated an existing predicate, we can also add a new one. So let's say Michael is from Australia. We can represent that by attaching to the node with UID 0x3, the country Australia. And now when you fetch it back, you will receive it. And not only that, but you could also see it on the schema. OK, so now we learned how to create new predicates from a node given its UID. But how would you create a predicate in between two existing nodes? Let's say Layla started following Michael. We know that this relationship between them has to be represented by creating the follows edge between them. So we can see that pa1 has 0x1, Layla 0x2, and Michael 0x3. The next step is going to go back to the mutation tab and say that the UID 0x2 corresponding to Layla now follows the UID 0x3 corresponding to Michael. When you run this, you will see if you go back to the query and you also ask for follows and the name of the person followed, you should be able to see that now Layla follows Michael. In addition to that, if you click on the graph tab, you will see a representation, a graphical representation of that loop. Michael follows by one, who follows Layla, who follows Michael again. It is good to notice at this point that follows is indeed a predicate that has a direction. Michael following Pawan doesn't mean that Pawan follows Michael. 
In later episodes, we will explore reverse edges and how you can do those traversals in the reverse direction. Okay, so let's continue with our exploration of the UID 0x3 and say, okay, we want to see who is Michael following, but also we want to see who is followed by the people followed by Michael. It is as simple as copy pasting, really. Now you can run it and see that Manko follows the one who follows Layla. If you represent that in the graph, you will see that this is, a, this is almost a cycle, but it's still not closed because we are not displaying anything related to who is followed by Layla. Before we fix that though, let's change the name of this query block. We should get something that helps us better understand what the query does. So in this case, find followers is a much better name, I would say. And if you run the query again, you will see that in the response, there will be a find followers field in the data object returning the JSON response. Okay, you might see this coming, but how do you get who is followed by Layla? Again, copy pasting. You can move it back into that Layla's node and you will see that now the loop is closed and Layla follows Michael. Or in the JSON response, you will also see that 0x3 UID has been repeated again. The question now is, isn't there a better way of doing this? Well, let's think about it. What are the predicates that we are fetching continuously? We're fetching name, age, and follows. So we could actually say, let's reverse those three predicates, but recursively over and over and over. How do you do that? Well, for that, GraphQL plus minus provides a directive called recurse. To use it, simply keep those three predicates that we want to use and add recurse. To have exactly the same behavior as we had before, we could say def four. And now you will see that the response is the same because we are saying we want to fetch up to four iterations of that recursion. If you go to two or three, you will see that the answer is smaller. But if you go to five or six, you will see that it is not, it is not larger. What is going on in here? Well, by default, recursion will stop once you reach a node that you have visited before. So in this case, as soon as we reach Michael, we will stop. If you want to change that behavior though, you can set the argument loop to be true in the recurse directive, and then the iteration will not stop. Beware of using loop true without a control of the maximum depth, because if you did not set a limit, this would potentially be an infinite loop. GraphQL plus minus will not allow you to do that, but still you can set a pretty large depth and see what happens. No matter how large the response is though, the graph representation will be the same because at the end of the day, we only have three nodes. Last but definitely not least, let's learn how to delete predicates. We already know how to create new ones and how to modify the ones that are existing. Deleting them is not different. We're gonna need to use the UIDs of the nodes that we want to take into account. And instead of sending a mutation with set, we're going to send a mutation with delete. Delete also takes an array of nodes and the first node will be the one with, zero, with UID 0x2 zero corresponding to Layla. And we're going to say that we want to delete the relationship follows that points to the node with UID 0x3. Zero now, if you query who follows whom again, you will see that Layla stopped following Michael. How would you add that predicate again? Simple, simply replace delete with set and you're good. There's an alternative syntax to JSON. It is RDF. When you use RDF, you will not need to wrap delete or set in double quotes. Instead, you will pass the keyword delete or set, then open brace and close brace at the end. And then every single line will be a different predicate. So in this case, we're going to say we want to delete the predicate going from 0x2 with name follows and going into anything, we can do a star. This will delete any predicate follows coming out of Layla. And this actually would be exactly the equivalent to 0x3 since that was the only value we had. So you can also do that, right? But then if you wanted to create that predicate again, replace, delete, reset, and you're good again. Okay, so it is time to wrap up. In this second episode of the Getting Started with DGraph tutorial, we'll learn about the operations using UIDs. We learn how to start fetching UIDs, how to create predicates coming from a UID, create predicates in between two IDs, and even deleting them. We also learn about how to do traversals across many levels, both by getting very deep queries and also the recurse directive. Before we wrap up, here's a sneak peek into our next tutorial. Did you know that you could search predicates based on their value? 
Does that sound interesting? Then see you all soon in the next tutorial. Till then, happy graphing.